Today's show is brought to you by Fiverr.com. That's the word five with two R's after it, dot com. Fiverr is a site for freelance work. You can hire freelancers to do a variety of things for you. You can be a freelancer on it as well and experiment with the site to see whether what you want to be doing professionally outside of the rat race, outside of your full-time job, is viable. It's basically a site where they'll do the billing and collection for you and pay you it once they've received the money. In addition, if you want to hire people like I do for book editing, transcriptions and such, very inexpensive. And I've had very good work for me. So again, it's Fiverr.com. You can use the link in the show notes. Frankly, you'll get a good deal from it if you do that. Now, let's get going. This is No BS Job Search Advice Radio, episode 2096. I'm Jeff Alden, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome. Today's show is one I recorded a couple of years ago uh, when I was still doing what used to be called Google Hangouts. And this is one dealing with applicant tracking systems and what my philosophy is about them. Hope you find this helpful. Hope you give it an honest review in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, whatever, wherever I should say you listen to the show, please give it an honest review. It does provide me with useful information and it helps other people discover the show. And I hope you find this helpful. And in the meantime, we'll be back in just one moment. If you're going to start a business for yourself, a side hustle or an actual all out business, it's important that you set yourself up the correct way for tax purposes. Incorporate.com, great service. I used it myself to start my business many years ago. It will allow you to set up a C Corp, an S Corp, an LLC, or a nonprofit all through the web. They'll answer questions for you. They're not you know, legal experts. You should have one of your own, but they make the process of setting up a business very easy. So use the link in the show notes to go to incorporate.com. It will help you a lot. And we'll be back in just one moment. I suspect it's your problem too, but this is what my opinion is. Applicant tracking systems are employer manifestations of how horrible it is to work there. We live at a time where we like to think of ourselves as individuals, or we try to accomplish good things in our work and good things in our lives. And applicant tracking systems are a throwback to the Industrial Revolution and factory life. You have to fit that box, that real square box. And unless you fit that real square box, you're never going to get an interview. And the result winds up being you spend an inordinate amount of time filling out these forms that do nothing to help you. Now, I understand from an employer's perspective why they use these things. They have to report the U.S. government. That is, if you're in the United States, of course. I don't know if it's true in other countries, but in the U.S., you know, there's a reporting requirement to ensure that you're not, they're not participating in discrimination. So I understand that part of it. And I also understand the filtering element of it because, frankly, I'm bombarded to the point where I often feel assaulted by resumes that in no way, shape, or form fit the requirements. So I'll give you an example. On Monday morning of this week, I walked in to about 275 resumes. I ask people in my emails to only, you know, if they're qualified, interested, and available uh, to apply for a position. And you know what I got out of those 250 some odd resumes? Two people, two resumes that demonstrated a fit. Now, uh, two is great. <laughs> Most of the time, I get a lot fewer than that. And it's horrible. All day long, I'm reading spam from job applicants. Now, there are some employers that are getting thousands of resumes a day, and they need help. So I understand using some of the uh, decision support tools that are built into the applicant tracking software in order to weed out inappropriate people, like 
the lifeguard who applied for the business analyst job uh, this weekend, uh, or the Purdue chicken plucker uh, who applied for a Java developer position, and nowhere on that resume did it indicate they'd even taken one class that would allow them to be vaguely qualified to do that job. So job hunters have really brought this on themselves. Now, my encouragement to you is never, ever, ever apply for a position using an applicant tracking system. Why? Well, frankly, these are horrible expressions that corporations inflict on you. I filled out one earlier today just to get a feel for it. For it. So I used a, a, a blanked out resume that someone had sent to me, put a bunch of X's through it to see what the system would do. Because I check these things from time to time. I have some clients that like to use them. I try and talk them out of it. Certainly, I talk, I've talked them out of it in the context of having my applicants complete these forms. So you know, here's what it did. Yes, it parsed in, information from the person's resume into certain fields. It was good in that regard. Where it was not good was it did a bad job of parsing. You know, education in particular, completely wrong. Um, you know, it got one degree correct. It got a person who was pursuing a master's as having one. Coursework that they had taken that had nothing to do with the certification was put into, into different fields that had to get removed. Then there's a lot of private information that I treated as being private for this individual, this mythical, this mythical person. And you know, when all is said and done, I spent about 15 minutes filling out a form that you know, did nothing for me. You know, as a job hunter, you know statistically how few of these things you're going to get a response from. Uh, and all day long, all evening long, people fill these things out. Now, if you're a user of Taleo, for example, T-A-L-E-O, it will take one form and input it into their system. So what? You know, ultimately, you want to have tailored resumes input into systems and not one generic resume. If you use one generic resume, it's like the broken watch that's right twice a day. Uh, and it's going to be right a couple of times, but most of the time, you're going into, here it comes, the black hole. You know, that, that place where you never get responses. So I always encourage people when they're looking for work, never, ever apply for a job in an applicant, using an applicant tracking system. What those things really demonstrate is how worthless employees will be once they're on board how they're going to be made to fit into that box. Here it is again, the box. You know, you're going to be in the cube in your box. Let's see if that fits. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Fit the box. And you're going to have to conform to rules uh, and your individuality and creativity and, and your ideas are not going to be particularly well respected. My encouragement to you, instead of applying for jobs using applicant tracking systems, is to try and find a hiring manager. If you don't know a hiring manager at that firm, which I don't really expect you to do, what you do is you get onto LinkedIn. You do Google searches. You find people within the organization, reach out to them and say, I saw a position uh, with your firm for such and such. I don't want to contact the HR organization because, frankly, all they're going to have me do is go back to that awful applicant tracking system and complete a form. It's going to get parsed and never seen by anyone ever again. Could, I, could you point me towards someone who's either the hiring manager or might get me close to this, closer to this manager so that I might be able to speak with them directly or submit a resume to them directly rather than through the system? You won't believe how many people will help you. I know in my work, I find that all the time. People are very willing to be helpful in order to help someone help them. So again, my encouragement is always reach out to hiring managers. If LinkedIn isn't your best avenue because your network is real small, use Google. 
you know, do a search on Google by company name. If it's a long name, put it in quotes. Um, you know, put manager, put the technology in. If you're in IT, put the keywords in. Uh, it so that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, I've got a lot that's in the show notes that will help you. Go there, take a look at some of the things I highlight. I know it can help you with your search. But I want you to do one thing for me, and that is put in your phone the biggamehunter.us, Jeff Alpin, my name. And when you need help, when you need advice, when you have a question, come over to the website, go exploring in the blog, contact me for coaching or because you have a question, I'd love to help you. In the meantime, I hope you have a terrific day, and most importantly, be great! If you're in whatever field you're in, and see what pops up. But never, ever apply for a position using an applicant tracking system. Now, this show is brought to you by JobScan. JobScan is a site where, frankly, they take some of the issues with the black hole, the applicant tracking system, and really help you fix your resume so that it's able to get through the system. Now, the way it was started out is there was a job hunter named James Who, who was running into problems getting his resume through the applicant tracking systems because he found that they were parsing, ranking, and filtering resumes with, an, with algorithms. So what he did was develop a system that helps you figure out how your resume matches up against specific jobs and makes recommendations for how to tweak it to make it get through the systems. Not 100% perfect, but much, much better than what most people get. So use the link in the show notes. You will get better results with your resume when you submit it through the ATS. Now, we'll be back in just one moment.